Welcome back. This time we are getting started with WPF. First thing we need to do is fire up Visual Studio 2022. If you do not already have this, please see the description for a link to a tutorial video that will help you get this installed. Everything you install in that video will cover everything that you need in this series. Okay, next we need to go to create a new project. We need to pick WPF application. If it's not in your recent templates, you can put WPF in the search bar. WPF application. Next, name your project. So I'm going to say WPF tutorial. Pick where you want it to be saved. Push next. We do want .NET 6.0 and then create. Give it just a second and you will be ready to go. Like I mentioned last video, our project is created and it's ready to run. But instead of a console, we're going to get a blank application window. You can see we have an application icon, a title. This title bar is draggable. We can resize it. It's got minimize, maximize, and close. And that's about it. That's about what it comes with just right out of the box. So before we jump into actually making this user interface, I want to talk about all of the elements in Visual Studio that come along with a WPF project. The first thing I want to look at is the Solution Explorer. Just like a console application, it is displaying what is on your file system. This is your solution file. This is your project file. These are all of the files within your project. We don't need to worry about dependencies right now. We don't need to worry about assembly info right now. App.xaml, we will worry about very shortly, but not quite yet. So for now, let's just focus on this main window file that was created and this main window xaml.cs file that appears to be under it. So if we right click our project and go to open folder in file explorer, you can see that main window.xaml and main window.xaml.cs are two distinct files. One is a windows markup and one is a C sharp source. So it's not actually inside the other file, but visual studio relates them together because the .cs file is what is called code behind or the interaction logic for the XAML UI file. So what that's going to mean for us is in the XAML file, we're going to put things like buttons and text boxes and the height and width of the window. And then in the code behind file, we're going to tell it what to do when those visual elements are interacted with. So if we have a button on this form and the user pushes it, this code behind file can tell the application what to do when that button is pressed. While we're in the code behind, let's clean it up a little bit. Now that we know that this is the code behind, which is the interaction logic, I'm going to remove this summary comment. And then we can right click and say remove and sort usings. And that will clean up our unused using statements, giving us a little bit cleaner view so we can see exactly where and what we're doing. Now, if you're familiar with console applications, you may be wondering, where is the entry point of this application? Where is my main method? Well, it's not this constructor. It's actually generated automatically on build within this app class. So down the line, if you need direct access to your main startup method, you have to override it in this class. And we'll get there later. I just wanted you to be aware if you were curious. Okay, now let's jump back to our XAML file and take a look at some of these elements. So on the left, you can see that we have a toolbox, which has common WPF controls, and then all WPF controls. And now these are the built-in controls that you can use immediately in your application by adding them to your XAML file. So now let's look at the XAML file. When you open a XAML file up, you should have a two-pane view, the top being the designer, and the bottom being the XAML markup. This is what you should see when you launch your application, and this is what creates that view. Now, if we look at these tiny little button controls, it may be hard to see on the video, but you should see design and XAML, and you should see an up-down arrow in between them that says swap panes. If you want to make the XAML on top and the designer on the bottom, you can do that. And then also, if you look on the right-hand side, you should see little bitty pane icons, which one is vertical split and one is horizontal. So if you have a widescreen monitor, you may want to go with a vertical split, or you may want to stick with the horizontal split. And that's just personal preference and what kind of monitor you have to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, now all of these controls over in the toolbox, like I said before, we can use in our XAML file, 
and you can actually drag them straight onto your UI, but I do not recommend this, and I will tell you and show you why. Okay, let's keep it classic and go with Hello World. So let's look at our common WPF controls for some way to write Hello World on our UI. Well, we have a label, which we could use. That would be perfectly fine, but we're not labeling anything. We could use a text box, but those are used for taking user input. So let's use our text block, which is just a control used for a block of text. So we could take this and we could drag it somewhere onto our UI. So let's drop it right there. Now you can see that added a XAML element for a text block, which opens a tag, and it has some properties like HTML properties or XML properties, and then it has a closing tag, and that creates the text block on our UI. But since we dragged and dropped it on our form, you can see it automatically added properties for us like horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, and margin. Well, this margin means we're always going to be 74 from the left, 49 from the top, zero from the right, and zero from the bottom, which are also affected by our alignments. So by dragging and dropping it, it has automatically assumed that we want it in that position all the time, which is rarely the case. Because if we run this, you can see it's where we put it, but if the user resizes the window, it doesn't move. And if they shrink the window, it doesn't move. And most of the time, if we have a UI, we want it to be responsive based on how the user sizes the window. Generally, we want these things to move. So if you drag these controls to the main window, you need to be very aware that they are going to do these kinds of things for you and that you need to adjust them. I will throw in that you can turn on grid lines and you can turn on snapping to grid lines and that will make your dragging and dropping and moving of your elements a little more accurate, but still in my opinion, and again, it's just an opinion, I would much rather not drag and drop and write the controls myself. So let's do that. Let's remove the text block that we drag and dropped and let's add our own. I'm going to open a tag. I want a text block and then I'm going to close the tag and now we have a text block. We need to add text to it so it will show up. So we'll say text equals. It automatically adds a string for us, in which case we can add hello world. So now you can see our text block showing up. Now say we want the font size to be bigger. We could say font size. Let's make it 75. And now let's say, well, we don't want it in the top left corner all the time. Let's put it in the center of our screen. So we can say vertical alignment center, horizontal alignment center. So now we have created our own element and we have sized it exactly where we want it to be. So when we run this, it's always going to align it vertically and centered. So when we move our UI around, resize it, it's going to be exactly where we want it to be. And the intentionality of writing this makes sure that all of your elements are always in place. And as you can see, it really doesn't take that much time. Honestly, I think it takes longer to drag and drop it and then go backwards and fix it than it does to just write it yourself. Congratulations, you created your first WPF application with a responsive UI element. Now, if any of this seemed like too much, confusing markup, anything like that, please don't feel overwhelmed. We are going to be using this a lot, making plenty of these elements with plenty of properties, and we're gonna be diving into responsive design and complex layouts. So don't worry if this is a little bit too much for now, it will get easier with time. Next up, we're going to be diving into the code behind and learn how to do some basic interactions with our GUI. So thanks for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. I hope this is helpful. Happy coding and as always until next time, take care.